welcome to this session of vision pack series uh, i am vidyat joshi and i shall be your host for this session we bring you these uh, vision pack sessions uh, every month and uh, the idea being that you know that uh, like sort of uh, all the all the young parents especially parents of uh, children from 0 to 3 which is a really potent uh, time frame so all you young parents uh, should you know be aware and uh, be conscious so we bring you experts from various fields who sort of share their experiences and guide us and uh, it's they are very useful sessions uh, we have done quite a few in the past um, you know this is our 13th one in fact uh, if many of you might remember we have done some things on social and emotional intelligence then we had the storytelling session then positive parenting all various aspects and facets of development we try to bring to you and the expert is there to you know guide us so they are rather useful and if if you have missed some of the session i urge you all to go and look at our youtube uh, videos which is there on our site on our youtube channel so today uh, we are having this uh, a session called as healthy babies make healthy adults and we have in fact had this session earlier this is kind of a sequel to the earlier session and uh, you know uh, we felt it's rather important especially after the post pandemic uh, you know gearing up for post pandemic we had that session the last time with dr aparna kapoor so this time we uh, felt uh, we all know as adults uh, we are aware of the importance of physical fitness and you know a healthy life many of us probably have uh, uh, regular exercises we do routines and we we know that if, if we don't do our routine our whole day goes for a toss so we are very aware of that about our own selves so our babies too you know they need to be physically act physically active every day and it's really important for their healthy growth and development and ideally it should start very early in life it should in fact be a part of uh, baby's everyday play so even your little ones uh, under 2 years also need uh, a lot of opportunities for uh, you know free movement floor space all these things are needed for them of course you have to make sure that the environment is safe no doubt so in fact um, uh, the world health organization they actually set out you know guidelines for how much physical activity a child in this age group should actually have so now to understand the benefits of this physical activity in these foundational years and you know what is the impact of it in um, in later on in life we have with us a uh, expert dr tejal kanwar uh, dr kanwar is a Uh, she is a gynecologist and a obstetrician she has uh, more than 20 years of experience in that field but what's more important is that she's a mentor for children in fitness and sport so she runs a a, a very beautiful fitness program called as clinetic she's the co-founder of it and it helps children enjoy physical activity and you know it sort of inculcates a lifelong habit so she has received um, recognition as the co-founder of of the best physical um, physical education and sports education program by uh, in uh, by indian education awards 2020 so who better to tell us about health and fitness uh, than a very fit doctor i would say so welcome dr kanwar it's uh, great to have you with us yet again you were there the last time and it's a pleasure to have you again thank you for the kind introduction and the words um hope i'm uh, audible and loud yes you are okay all right so i'm glad that we are back again and talking about kids fitness which uh, we are very passionate about at clinetics and half more than uh, 15 years of my life i have dedicated uh, as a obstetrician and a gynecologist and from there came the vision to you know keep all children not just the girls who are visiting my clinic with pcod but all children uh, from a very young age to inculcate the habits of fitness in them and that's where we started clinetics with a bunch of very enthusiastic young sports uh, coaches trainers instructors and 
their only ambition is to get every child to play and run and that is very much required now so we will come you know quickly start uh, i had already spoken about it the last time but this is not just a sequel we'll probably even go more in detail about what are the different practical takeaways uh, that parents can have from this uh, discussion so uh, you know for many years we just assumed that uh, young children are uh, active today our kids are active and you know they are going down and playing but what used to happen a few years back was a lot of playing outdoors and even though we are in high rises with a uh, large apartment complexes in the urban living um, it is not really happening so what is required is a structured play what used to happen was a lot of exploration tumbling jumping hopping yeah. climbing going down the slides so that has reduced to a considerable uh, extent because of the gadgets and the devices and the technology and a lot of sitting and of course that has gone up uh, tremendously in the pandemic uh, we have been forced to sit so what are we going to do about this you know it is quite shocking the kind of statistics that we are seeing uh, in canada it is said that almost uh, uh, just 5% of the kids in canada are getting the really required physical activity that is almost 60 to 70 uh, 60 minutes per day moderate to vigorous activities required in young children not just running or not just uh, uh, playing in it is really vigorous uh, exercise which is uh, required uh, so what has led to this you know appalling numbers and why this is happening is it just the devices is it, is it just technology why are humans not motivated mm -hmm. so we need to ask these questions repeatedly there are no easy answers there is unwillingness inability to lead an active lifestyle there is unwillingness to participate in sports in many children uh, there is also uh, due to all of this there is a lot of Uh, which leads to poor self esteem in children so uh, you know so keeping all this in mind uh, we need to talk about many aspects uh, going forward you know 0 to 3 is that age group where we think you know the kids are act active but uh, over the course of this uh, next 45 minutes you will be surprised to know with you right that's what we were talking about correct correct great so um so you know before we continue i would just like to read one uh, little disclaimer which we normally read uh, uh, before every session so this session is not intended to give any medical advice um we are only going to mention broad and generally accepted principles and practices please consult your doctor or specialist about all specific questions and circumstances so although does uh, although we have a doctor on the panel uh, i just would like to make this disclaimer anyways uh, so to begin i wanted to actually start with a little question for the parents so that we just uh, like sort of all of us jump into it straight away uh, to some extent i think ma'am has already given the answer but uh, nevertheless i will ask this question anyway so uh, you know uh, there is this uh, i'm going to share one uh, one link with you all on one slide um, just hold on a second please so i just just so that we all participate in it um i hope you can see my screen uh so if you can just yes, go yes. to just go to menti.com or i'll send you this link as well um and just answer this question the question is how much physical activity do two year olds need what do you think uh if you can just put it there i'll put it in the chat window also and throughout the session you can put your questions in the chat window we will however take them up at the end of the session towards the end i mean so this is um, this is the link can you go to menti.com in your browsers and type in this number or just click on this link so somebody said about one uh, one hour of uh, Uh, physical activity is needed okay so they are saying 2 hours 4 hours 3 hours 30 minutes max these are the responses that people have given okay got it yeah and what would you say dr kanwar what should be typically the uh, you know the time that's required yeah so 
Except, yeah, right. So I know there are uh, one or two hours, three hours, 30 minutes is too less. <laughs> but um, I would say, see, every waking minute of a child, except the time when the child is having something to eat, of course, we have to train the children to sit and eat. I think the child should be active, um, not just confined to a cot or a high chair, you know, for hours. But three hours, that is almost 180 minutes, is, um, you know, the time required. Time should be spent by the child to have unstructured, which is the free play, and structured activity. So for a two-year-old, you will wonder what is a structured activity. But this is the amount of time a child really needs to spend to be active physically moving about, you know, very, very actively, like almost moderate exercise. That is 180 minutes for a two-year-old. We'll come to the tabulation uh, in the next uh, few slides. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so you're saying uh, three hours of... Um active play is or activity is required even for a two-year-old uh, throughout the day, right? Okay, that's, uh, you know, because that's what people think, tend to think that children really don't need so much time, but it's, it's really required, although they are running around and all, as you said. But you yeah, did yeah. mention about, uh, you know, something about, uh, there are right, nowadays what uh, parents tend to do is like, you know, there are a car seat or a high chair or something. So mothers tend to put children in these, uh, you know, things so that it's comfortable for the mother as well to feed the child, things like that. But these yeah. things probably are very confining in some ways. Do they restrict? Many things, yes. Yeah. So maybe. Yeah, definitely. So could you tell us about uh, what do you think these things, uh, what these things, how do they inhibit the movement in babies? So uh, you, uh, the, uh, as parents, we need to see how long the child is being confined. We need not uh, confine the child for hours on a high chair, just watching TV or some device uh, so that the child is eating. And car seats are another issue. Um, you know, of course, there is a lot of comfort for the parents and uh, comfort, uh, which is and safety for the car seat. But uh, you really need to, uh, you know, uh, what we call it as uh, audit the amount of time mm. that the child is spending, you know, being uh, shackled, I would say. Uh, yeah. It's a little harsh word, but yes, <laughs> that's how it is. But you know, kids are really born to play, born to squat, born to move, born to run. And they are naturally so active. But we as parents and as gatekeepers, you know, even schools are restricting in many ways because all like there are back-to-back -back classes in the schools. Now, of course, there's online school is so you don't even, it's horrible. So, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, so, so there are so many things that we are uh, subjecting our children to and we really need to educate ourselves. Parents are basically just interested in keeping the child ready for school. Okay, when at the age of two and three, okay, my child is in preschool, nursery now, I need to teach the child ABCs and one, two, threes. And I've seen parents of a four-year-old also getting tuitions for English. Oh. Uh, I think that, you know, these and, you know, peer to peer pressure is so much that we are just focusing on children to be ready for school in only academics. I think we really need to change our outlook. There's too much pressure. We, especially this generation and these two generations of parents are also the sandwich generation. Hmm. There are our parents who are unable to understand us because we as parents are also challenged with the technology that is surrounding us right now right. we don't want to miss out the online education which is giving our children and us access to amazing learnings online digital learnings right, right. Uh, so it is important that we do take advantage of technology take advantage of what is so easily accessible affordable on um, in the online medium but at the same time we have not been taught on how to teach the how to train the child to balance everything it wasn't that for our parents so there is no traditional way there is no playbook right now there is no parenting guide that we can really follow we have to figure it out ourselves so there is there are a lot of cons uh, and pros as i said for online education the cons are plenty 
there is a lot of passive consumption of content and there is absolutely no learning in a lot of cartoons and unnecessary content that children are imbibing nowadays there is no peer to peer learning that children are experiencing when it comes to online education there is a lot of peer to peer learning which happens when you are in a classroom or when you are playing in the playground you are playing football or even a 3 year old playing in with a bunch of friends there's a lot of learning there's a lot of teamwork there's a lot of uh, collaboration hmm. that child learns you know even as a 3 year old learning to share so all that the child is not learning you know right. how they right. uh, they are they're learning from each other now the children don't even know how to express because they are confined uh, because of the pandemic so parents really don't know they are so clueless as to how to deal with this situation uh no one has been subjected to this you know so we need to keep learning unlearning the old learning new and mm. how active the child should be at every age group of course under the uh, age of 12 months uh there is a lot of interactive play that happens a lot of tummy time that happens and we really need to bring down the sedentary behavior uh, sedentary activities of the child and uh getting very engaging activity along with uh, even the food time or the meal time is very important so instead of just passive consumption we may think of uh, making it very interesting and of course the parents have to put in the time and effort so that really needs to happen yeah um the toddlers from the age of 1 to 2 years to up to 3 to 4 years need 180 minutes uh, each day of good activity and that is structured activity as well not just unstructured free play there has to be certain structured activity which has to be taught which is a fundamental movement skills fms skills need to be taught at an early age what i mean by fms skills is kicking throwing hopping skipping squatting all this can be taught at a very very early age to the children and about the age of 5 years 4 5 years at least 60 minutes of uh, exercise uh, structured and unstructured is required for the healthy growth of the bone strengthening of the bones uh, strengthening of the muscles so you know it's not just you know that the muscles are stronger or the bones are, there are joints which need a lot of variations like if you i'll just give you an example of the hip uh, hip joint or the hip flexor as we call it we are sitting so much right hmm. the only uh, you know the, what we are, we should be worried about we think that it's the back that we should be worried about but the entire body every group of muscle is just sitting our neck hmm. is all the time craned in the front we are putting so much load at the back so hmm. there are so many things that we are not noticing it is not just strengthening it is literally the growth of the body is being hampered by um, just sitting so uh, you know it is extremely important that the sedentary behavior we really need to focus on why we are sitting so much we need to give ourselves these multiple breaks in between and come up with some innovative creative ideas which we will talk about later on also yeah right so i guess um, uh, what uh, doctor you're trying to say is you know like we have the three r's which most uh, parents are bothered about reading writing arithmetic i think there should be another fourth r maybe rigor you know so we should be quite concerned with that as well so um, and uh, because although uh, you know the pandemic did teach us that online education is probably in a way here to stay but still i guess you know it's important to think about what content is being offered um through that it's it's, it's a, even with the plethora of gadgets around i guess uh, we have to be the parents have to be mindful about what kind of content is put forward for your kids um so what would your views be on the you know kind of uh, content that should uh, go in via uh, for kids absolutely very smart content visual and audio should be shared with the children Where, uh, right. and i'll tell you the child can learn a lot more than what we used to learn when we were of uh, that age at 2 3 5 in fact today in the morning uh, we 
I had a talk uh, with a bunch of grade five learners in an IB school where we were teaching them marketing. And there was one kid who asked about uh, supply chain management. I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. these kids are really smart. Yeah. So uh, there is absolutely no end to the kind of learning now right. that is available, right? It's limitless. So I would say that parents have access to amazing content, but parents are really need to make that effort to filter out, uh, you know, create the Excel filter out uh, all the things which uh, you really don't require. I mean, when I, my children were very, uh, like between the age of zero to say seven, I, we didn't have access to all this content. Mm, And what I really made an effort to find out what are the websites and download all those worksheets and, uh, you know, see what is, what kind of content I can give to my children and yeah. buy a lot of books to read, like li- hard copy books to read, yeah. you know, not just uh, watch some cartoons. It was an effort at that time. So I can totally imagine mm-hmm. the kind of challenge now that the parents are facing. So it is important visually, the child is going to learn much faster. Um, so just try to uh, filter out the best kind of best possible content for your child and uh, educational content plus a lot of active screen time like dance fitness you know movement based uh, content also is available on online so you know there's so much which is available and definitely we can uh, get very smart and active kids you know nowadays but we really we need to make that effort right so you just need to view the screen in a different way right now you have to be very mindful about the content that's coming through it uh even babler yeah. provides all these uh, various activities which we have curated and so that ready for use for the parents yeah we also need to be a little mindful of what are the sports and when we talk about active children, uh, as I mentioned, we need to keep our child active. It is, of course, keep them active in various free play, sports and uh, fitness activities, but make sure that you're not overdoing it also. There are many uh, instances that I have seen where a child who is just three or four or five is put in a proper sports class which is like a tennis class or a badminton class at that young age it is more important to develop the fundamental movement skills so I've seen the child who is as tall as the tennis racket being put in a tennis class so just be aware uh, and don't get into the pressure of you know making the child they even get very turned off put off by the fact that they are not able to and they get bored also of that particular sport so it is important that we understand that after the age of eight really after the age of eight is what is required to be done for specific sports and not just one put the child in two sports you know football or even karate taekwondo these are very good um, you know, discipline sports to learn and very good for uh, overall body strength building also. Yeah. So even this, actually, even coaches and trainers don't know this. Also, so many times we see that, you know, the children are a little put off. Maybe it is a coach issue. The trainer is not very inspiring. Uh, the problem is yeah. with the child not being able to run fast. So that is what happened with my own son. And I was not able to understand. Even the coach was not able to give me any feedback so then we realized that my son had a flat foot and he was not able to run fast so these are some of the things our instructors and our coaches should be able to give us the feedback so that we as parents can correct it and then get the child motivated back into the activity right so uh, sports again I've noticed a few things like children um, you know the posture while sitting also needs to be in a certain way we I keep giving the feedback to my own children that you know you have to make sure that you are feeling as if the shoulder joint is like a ball and socket the shoulder is like a ball and you put it into the socket properly you know like this and make sure that your chest is out so posture and you need to keep on telling the child giving the feedback to the child it is not just that once you say 
एक बार बोला तो द चाइल्ड इज गोन नो इट इज अ वेरी इट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू बी अ वेरी पेशेंट पेरेंट एंड एक्सट्रीमली इंपॉर्टेंट दैट वी कीप गिविंग दिस फीडबैक ऑन अ डे टू डे बेसिस टू डेवलप अ हैबिट एंड देन यू विल रियलाइज यू नो दैट द चाइल्ड इज गोन पिक अप दैट ऑन इट सोन देन यू विल इट टेक्स ऑलमोस्ट ट्वेंटी वन टर्न टू क्रिएट अ हैबिट राइट सो वी ऑल नो दैट सो समटाइम्स इट मे टेक इवन मोर सो दीज आर things that we need to keep on focusing on then running i've seen a lot of children running like flapping their arms so it, it, you know it has to be a coordinated effect um uh, coordinated action so left with the right and right so even motor coordination hand eye coordination foot eye coordination such such uh, you know uh, details are required the fundamental movement skills even while throwing the overhead throw how the child is using the arm and how in kicking also the leg has to go fully behind fully extended and then you kick then you flex so the fundamental movement skills have to be developed at a very young age because i have seen many times children participating at the age of 8 9 10 and they are not fast enough they can't kick hard enough they can't run and they can't you know change directions agility is uh, quickly mm-hmm. changing directions right because they are not used to it in their they are not trained in their childhood mm-hmm. for that so we see that out of say 10 kids who are playing football there are these three four kids who get keep on getting demotivated Right. so it's so important for us as parents now we are trying to create that awareness that yes it is important to create this confidence uh on the playground at a very early age and then it easily is seen when the child wants to take up a sport let's not demotivate the children they have to stay active even half an hour of very fast running in the morning really refreshes the child for a very uh kick ass academic uh, schedule so <laughs> yeah. it's 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 uh, and that gives a lot of confidence also the focus improves the memory improves retention power improves so there are so many things you know that uh, yeah. so i guess uh, i guess what you were saying is just like how you know uh, in uh, whenever you have uh, literacy in terms of how you build up reading skills just like that you can build up these physical activity skills also right so i guess yeah, so just like how we learn the 1 2 3 or the basic nuance i mean the words and then we create sentences and get literate in english or maths we need to be physically literate correct correct so just like that so it's uh, basically you're talking about uh, physical literacy is a very important thing for parents to realize and like you gave this wonderful example about running itself you know so you should be able to step up those uh, skills that's what uh, you're trying to tell them right so uh yeah so and and i guess uh, you know uh, you talked about uh, how it builds uh, control and confidence is also a very important thing which is uh, uh, a very important takeaway of uh, physical literacy so um so you know let's talk more about the you know the nuts and bolts let's say so you did mention uh, the fundamental movement skills that active play does stimulate but would you like to you know um, you know sort of give examples and uh, take it forward as well uh, detail yeah, out sure. so these are basic uh, skills that uh, children can learn which are fms skills but over and above that now there is a huge new concept which has come up uh, which is still at a very nascent stage in india uh, extremely nascent i would say but uh, that weight training is also going to help the children um not oh. weights as in carry weights it's all more of body weight training so animal walks is what we are talking about right now so of course you're jumping hopping you're kicking throwing and you're turning into different directions quickly so reflexes strength building all of that is there but over and about that animal walks uh, by 3 4 5 year olds you know starting at that very early age really helps in full body strength building entire body right. just imagine you are doing a bear walk 
okay you are on all fours of course you are you are not bending the like um you you should not touch your knee to the ground to the floor and you are literally crawling like a bear and you do this uh 10 times and the kind of exercise that the child is going to get just by doing this the shoulders we are all the time walking running that's fine that is our lower lower limbs but what about our upper limbs right so that's what animal walks is all on all the four limbs and it really helps in building the core muscles the abdominals it helps in strengthening the back and the lower back and when you hmm. observe these kids who are doing these animal walks uh, and the body weight workouts like mountain climbing and all that they don't get back pain okay uh, they do not complain of uh, any digestive problems they do not complain of um, you know any neck issues uh, or headaches or uh, fatigue they are strong and it is amazing how just building this strength uh, muscular strength uh, creates uh, immunity also and fights right. infections and fights uh, diseases so mm-hmm. and the child is of course confident because you know child is able to complete so many things and uh, that way so and these kids when we are talking about physical literacy they are so active they are enjoying it because it's all animal and there is a game involved and all that and these yeah. kids i have noticed that they literally are self aware that they are active and they are also physically literate now what i mean by that is this physically literate kid as even at the age of 7 and 8 i've seen very few kids are like this but even if the kid has to you know there's a choice given whether you want to take the lift the elevator or the stairs this kid uh, we've seen such kids mm. you know they will take the stairs okay. because you know they know mm. that that is the amount of uh, that's the fun that they're going to have so i know my son does take the stairs in school uh, instead of going by the lift right. so uh so these are some of the changes that we see in children and they get they're more knowledgeable also so why does he want to take the stairs because he knows that this is good for him it is going to refresh him it's going to pump him up and there's a adrenaline rush and he's mm-hmm. going to compete with the uh, the his friend so there's like a nice competitive yeah. small thing okay you go faster than me or uh, you know who let's see who wins so there is this social skills right. also they build and there are a lot of leadership skills also uh, they start building so physical literacy is all about the knowledge that yes physical activity is important for me a physical literate child will create environments around him whatever the environment is given to him they will make sure that they kind of mm. find ways of uh, working out or exercising and being active and they will pursue it for life and that is what physical literacy okay. is uh, all about yeah yeah great so i i like this uh, this animal um, walk that you talked about i think in the last uh, session that we had with you you had uh, asked our parents to you know kind of do a duck walk send us a duck walk video but i think all these animal movements teach you a lot like even slithering like a snake and things like that we have a, in yeah. in our babbler uh, story books we have a book like that uh there's a competition animal competition so you come and do walk like a bear then climb like a monkey jump like a monkey and things like that you know so uh, some of our babbler parents might relate to that so that's wonderful i think uh, that's a good in- insight so you know try and making things uh, more fun for the child so that they enjoy it is uh, uh, very important yeah so um you know uh i i think uh, if you can tell us about a few more tips as to how to make uh, things more engaging little steps that you can build up on to increase this uh, literacy yeah, so like we need you talked to build about up on balance uh, stability skills uh locomotor skills which are the movement skills and the manipulative skills uh so this is uh, movements are divided into these three kind of skills and we need to focus on various aspects but of course when we are playing a game all the aspects are kind of uh, uh, you know everything is included in these exercises so if you have a 
spaces which are outdoor spaces of course there is this monkey bar or the slides and uh, the swings and all that is there but try to look for any interesting games that you can create out of even pebbles or you know create your island and the uh, water and your you need to not step on the land and just on the pebbles and create races hmm. where even dog in the bone if you want a group of kids to play uh, don't make them run on just two limbs you know make them do a bear crawl make them make them do an bear crawl so the bear is injured and the kid has to put one leg up and just hop on three limbs right so that is also an amazing exercise mm. for uh, it's it's superb for cardio and uh, so many uh, like inchworm exercise and you do a toe touch with your knees completely non bent and uh, you uh, tell the yeah. child to go forward and then bring the feet forward towards the arms and that is an amazing exercise frog jump is very good for fat loss if there are kids who are having a little bit of tummy fat and if the if the parent is concerned frog jumps and star jumps are brilliant cardios and they are superb for fat loss uh, fat burn right. even the parents should just do with the children and you know create a competition between say the father and the daughter and the mother and the son and let's see who wins kind of a game and it is extremely uh, good for the you know like when you are doing a group activity not just family they can do it with their friends also it it really does you don't realize by the time passes so it is not like a big uh, time consuming thing you know just it's very quick and uh, fun children don't really like running very few children uh, like to run they prefer playing a sport or doing all these competitions just running is a mental game so I, we would prefer that the child picks up uh, sports you know running maybe after the age of 8 or 10 or something like that and of course you know you can use so many different tools uh, at home uh, like hula hoops uh, as i mentioned beams and like these tunnels which are there then uh, blowing bubbles or even parachutes and there are so many riding toys which are available so and of course you have access to in outdoors you have access to parks and open spaces which during this pandemic it's fine to go out doors to the open spaces and schools uh, i would recommend you know uh, of course there are lots of schools who don't have, which don't have access to uh, playgrounds uh, so that is something infrastructure is an issue uh, but the parent finally has to make that effort to take any kind of membership in gym in a gym or a club where the child can get access to a swimming pool or a uh badminton court that way yeah. uh, so so i guess even uh, the parents have to be kind of a role model they have to uh, do these kind of physical activities with their children engage them in it um just that one last save, question that will save a lot of lecturing to the children because <laughs> when the child sees that the parent is doing so regularly correct i don't think that there is any need to lecture your child then and you know and then go on nagging because the child is looking at you like okay you are not doing anything why are you telling me <laughs> right <laughs> right so it's essential to have this uh, mindset uh, a family mindset for uh, exercising i guess so um, i think we'll just take i'll ask you just one question before we open the session for a q and a so i think with yeah. all this uh, physical activity it might be good to kind of make a plan for it uh, just like how you have a plan of of uh, of for your physical exercise for little babies also it's important to do it you know you set out because it's going to be unstructured play most of the times so to give it some structure we can have a kind of a discipline set out a plan for it do you think we should do that yeah it's very simple planning people think that oh it's you have to you know plan so much but just you know on like three times a week just do these you know five to 10 exercises do mountain climbing even with little kids 
animal walks, right? Just Google 10 animal walks, your bear walk, your inchworm, your butterfly kicks, your donkey kicks, your frogs and your star jumps, uh, your burpees, your push-ups, your skipping rope. That's it. Why do you need too much of variety? This is it. And this will go on for like two to three months and uh, you'll be happy. You know, then the child will take it up on its own. So it, it's okay. Uh, you know, of course, planning is required. Uh, more than planning, what is required? See, there are like thousands of plans available. But what is most important is consistency. I'll tell you, you can make plans, make plans, but you stick to the plan is very important. We are in January. I'm sure a lot of resolutions have already been broken. So <laughs> there's no point in planning anything and resolute. I mean, I think that uh, you just need to stick stick to your 2021 plan. It's okay, but right. just be consistent. You know that that way you can be consistent with the plan for your child also. Mm -hmm. Right. Great. So I think we just had time to go to the basics of it and uh, we'll just take up some questions from the uh, from the audience. So I'll take it right from the beginning in the chat. Um, uh, so uh, Sonia Singh says that I have a super active son. Nobody can match his energy to use his energy. He does all mischief and notorious activities. Everybody complains. Um, I don't understand how to use this super energy and get him in discipline. So it is going to be an effort, definitely, if uh, we, uh, that's great that your child has so much energy and to channelize his energy, it is best to put him in some kind of structured activity, which he will enjoy. And when he's in a group play, when he's with a bunch of his friends, he will learn how to also control his energy, to utilize his energy in the right way. So... Um, you share your responsibility with another instructor by, you know, putting him in some kind of an activity class that will help for sure. Yeah, there are a lot of, uh, you know, we have activities here. They call it as uh, playground activities. So you have a bunch of kids coming in right now. Maybe it's closed, but uh, uh, they can do something like that. The next one is uh, Shruti Bhayani is asking at what age swimming coaching should start. Swimming coaching, the kids can be coached, uh, say, after the age of three, four, five, anytime, but babies can be put in a pool yeah. under supervision anytime. So, yeah, in fact, uh, yeah, my uh, when my daughter was born, I, I, you know, she was one month old when we used to in the bathtub. So you could do that. And I found that she uh, was a great swimmer at that time. So didn't have to do much but of course it's up to the parents I suppose yeah yeah so anytime I mean it's not the kids can learn very quickly and swimming is one of the best workouts one of the best it's great for uh, uh, your lungs it's very good yeah and I think those yeah. cross movements are there no? because uh, yeah. the yeah. coordination also improves yeah it lot of bone strength happens uh, because it's against resistance water correct so it's a very good full body workout mm, right the saida sumaya asks how to correct posture of children i remember my parents telling me again and again for hump posture but it was just an irritating nagging for me do you have any advice on how it must be done yeah so it is again a habit that we needs to be created first of all uh, as i said you have to remember that your shoulders are in a ball and socket kind of a joint and make sure that the ball is inside the socket and uh, the there is an imaginary line if you are wanting to train your own child you have to think that there is an imaginary string which is attached to your here at the upper chest and somebody is pulling it. So when your child is sitting in front of you on a dining table or wherever y'all are sitting, so just say, hey, I'm pulling your string. I'm pulling your string. The child will automatically, you know, keep the yeah. chest uh, upright. And these are some of the things plus uh, making sure that 
the neck is not craned in the front. Uh, there is another thing that I recommend is putting the neck behind, just mm -hmm. bobbing the head back and forth. So that really helps because these are the muscles which are really getting strained. Like all of us are on a laptop. I'm on a laptop right now. So this is what we need to keep doing, this workout. So that also helps. And of course, back strengthening workouts will automatically help in uh, making sure your muscles are uh, strong. Posture, you have to keep reminding yourself of that imaginary string and then straightening the back, upper back. There, there's one thing to make it fun, you know, there is a, you get those gymnastic balls. Uh, I remember huge ones, no? So you can have a little one for your child and who's always having this hump posture. You, when you sit on that gymnastic ball, have the child sit on it, necessarily you sit straight. You cannot, if you yeah, sit yeah. in any other way, dhap karke, you fall. So I think that would be a good uh, fun way of, you know, whenever they are sitting down, make them sit on that little yeah. point of, kind of help in some way. Uh, Shruti Bhayani asks, uh, what age a uh, child start jumping as my little one is 27 months old and he tries but is unable to. So if you can guide how I can help him to jumping, 27 month old. Jumping. Yeah. He would just have started jumping now. So he has to hop over uh, an object or uh, any attractive toy. Uh, mm -hmm. And you can create some kind of a game out of it and you can play hopscotch. So that's one way of teaching a child how to jump. So front jumping is something very easy, right? But there is also side jumping that you can teach the child. Oh. Again, you can put some objects and uh, make a game out of it that you have to save the world or uh, save yourself from the sharks. So then right. the child will start learning uh, uh, accordingly right okay so just some creative way like you know to encourage that jumping you jump with the child yeah. as well and things like that okay and there's another one from Hari Priya Meher my son is eight months old what kind of play should be done and it should be for how many hours eight yeah, months so old. eight months uh, he would have been not uh, he would be just walking with support a bit right so mm -hmm. tummy time again Very and yeah. uh, lots of uh, free play with uh, plenty of toys uh, and uh, not putting him for too long in any kind of a high chair or a baby mm -hmm. chair. So yeah, automatically the freedom to move is there. Yeah. So that should not be a problem. And that below the age of one, we don't need any structured play except for the uh, tummy time. Mm -hmm. Right. So even floor space, you should give him a lot so that, you know, he gets encouraged for that, I suppose. Yeah, they do a lot of crawling. They crawl all over the place. Let them yeah. crawl everywhere. Just give Correct. them a lot of freedom to do everything. Do not restrict them in cots. Then activities, uh, Ruchita is asking activities for five-month-old baby. Uh, please tell me, ma'am, five-month-olds. Crawl, crawl, crawl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, crawling and I think even uh, like sort of uh, little even what about uh, the grasp and move up and you know, so that those uh, reflexes and things like that, would that also help? Yes, even... yes, yes. So uh, from a fitness point of view, there's not much we do for less than one year's uh, babies. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, giving different, different, you know, every limb can be moved around for the child hmm. in uh, crossing ways and uh, coordination yeah. with the opposite limbs. I think all that will help. Correct. But a lot of floor movements is what is important. Ah. Instead of putting Correct. the child in a cot or a bed, a lot of freedom to move hmm. is very big. We've seen in studies have shown that children who are given a lot of freedom to move, they automatically start walking also faster. Than yeah. The Correct. Correct. And there's always also I've, I've heard like, you know, uh, see this again, physical literacy, I would say, because it's first you, the child rolls over on the stomach and then they try to pull up, push up a little bit and then they crawl and then they start walking and then running. So, so nature is intended it for like that. So we are trying to, you know, like uh, confine them and, you know, now abhi nahi sida, uh, it starts walking and all that. So I think we should be mindful of that also. 
Uh, Sneha asks, uh, from which age uh, we need to be more concerned about the physical activity of our baby? Hmm. So, you, so concern means don't worry. Um, yeah. that make sure that the child is after the age of one, between one and four, is active and there is structured activity as well as a lot of free play. So two hours of free play, which is there. And right. at least uh, 45 minutes of structured play till the age of five. And beyond that, it should be a structured play for one hour minimum uh, for 60 minutes beyond the age of five. And so. Right. Should we buy a high chair? Ruchita is asking. Um, <laughs> we have lived without a high chair in yeah. our childhood. So I would not recommend it. Correct. Very strongly not recommend it. I never had a high chair for my children. Right. Uh, Rinki says, suggest some activities for 23-month-old baby girl. Hmm. Lots of activities. So a two-year-old can do so much, so much of... Uh, uh, mountain climbing, your uh, burpees and uh, your uh, games, uh, your hopping, your crawling, uh, soldier squats. Uh, as I enumerated, almost ten. Yeah, exercises. so many of them. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You can even uh, even I guess just climbing up stairs and down is a fun thing for them. Children yeah, can yeah, even yeah. do that. So, how to reduce TV and phone screen time for two-year-old is. Uh, Gukhania is asking yeah. how to reduce screen time see we should uh, not completely stop the screen time uh, and reduction is a better uh, thing to do so we should keep the child's mind child occupied in an activity where he doesn't keep on asking for the screen so that is something that we need to do very smartly that where is it that the child can focus so he's not going to go back to the screen. So create an environment that really helps child distract away from the screen. So that is how we need yeah. to reduce. If you're asking me how to reduce, that is one way of reducing. We have to create an interesting, another activity where child feels that this is more interesting than that uh, TV. Because I'll tell you, TV and all these cartoons are like that uh, hamburger or that pizza, you know, it's very tempting. <laughs> yeah. But then you have to make a dish which is as uh, tasty okay. as uh, the pizza. So you're not going to order the pizza. Mm -hmm. So right. uh, it is an effort for sure. It is an effort. Correct. So healthy food, <laughs> try to give in healthy content uh, rather than that. So even sometimes I have seen uh, parents like uh, just so that the child eats, they put them in front of the television or something like that, put on the cartoons and all that. I think they must avoid that because that becomes a habit. And then, uh, you know, it. Uh, even many families have this routine of sitting in front of the TV while having their dinner. That is a very wrong thing to do. So I think even if we... Uh, you know, WhatsApp page, uh, hum log hote hai, um, for coffee time. So, if we can cut down our own screen time, uh, automatically the children also uh, pick that up, I guess. Yes, yes. Everything lies with us. It's all on us. And I'm telling you, we are not the generation. We are really overwhelmed with a lot of huge effort now. Right. Our generation is definitely Correct. quite challenged. Yeah. So there are a lot many questions coming in, but I will ask Chandani Jain. She has raised her hand for quite some time. Uh, my baby is uh, right now 14 months old. She, What should I do for her? I mean, uh, uh, she is enjoying everything, but now what should I recommend for her? I don't know what to say. So that's great. <laughs> She's enjoying, she's a happy kid, so don't worry and uh, always introduce new uh, new uh, ways of uh, introducing active movements to your child. So, I, as I mentioned, uh, if you were there at that time, uh, animal walks is something that you can introduce uh, for that uh, young kid. Can you just uh, say me, I mean, how to introduce animal walk for her? Actually, even I don't know. So, yes, yeah, so you can start with bear walks, how bear walks, and you can look up certain videos also. And you have to 
not show the video but you have to show you doing that particular animal walk <laughs> to the child yeah. and then you can uh, teach the child so there are frog jumps animal walk star jumps uh, these are very basic she's still very small and yeah. uh, uh, crab walk is another one so i won't be able to demonstrate here yeah. but <laughs> can, it's, okay. it's, okay. Yeah. Yeah. it's it's all available so you can just like look at some other videos and then you can show because they really mm-hmm. enjoy these activities all right so even uh, shruti bhayani if you also want to ask you can unmute yourself and ask yeah hello thank you for the session ma'am uh, so the, my question is uh, we, uh, my question was regarding the jumping so my son was trying it but he is unable to do it so that was the question matlab that was the main how, concern how old is for me son? 27 months old okay so maybe it will take some time uh, hopping jumping is uh, also seen after the age of 2 and a half say even 3 years of age so uh, you can what you can do is uh, put obstacles and ask him to hop over the obstacle so put up a challenge and then maybe he will be more interested in jumping over an obstacle and uh then you can progress to instead of both legs hop one leg hop and then you do the side hopping but to start with it two years is just about the time they start so okay it's a, it's a plyometric exercise where the child has to carry the entire weight and then jump right so it mm. is going to be not uh, uh, that easy for the child to learn so you start doing the hopping in front of the child and then he will start getting motivated to do they won't do it with both the feet together sometimes they will just do with one like one or two steps yeah yeah he he do it with one one feet yeah. at a time but he is unable to do it with the two feet so proper jumping is not possible for him right now <clears throat> but you can uh, just wait for a few four to six months and you will see that there is a difference yeah so eventually uh, that walking will happen my 3 month old refuses to sleep at night and insists on sleeping through most of the day uh, any suggestions on how to keep him awake during the day uh, jinal baldev is asking this question so jinal that child is only 3 months old he cannot insist on anything <laughs> yeah so the don't worry about it uh it is just a small baby i think it is upon you to in like create that day and night difference and make sure that when the child is awake in the night you create that atmosphere that i am not available and i am sleeping you know so you need to train the child you, you, every child needs training from the parent the child is not going to insist on anything at 3 months right right so uh <clears throat> So I think uh, there's just two, three more questions we will take. Uh, Vishaka says very informative session. Please do a session on speech delay and therapy as well. Okay, we'll do. We'll consider that. That's a good suggestion, Vishaka. Thank you. We'll definitely take that on. Um, uh, Rinki says, uh, "How many, uh, ma'am? My baby is twenty-three months old. She is not speaking. At what? Uh, what do I? What may I concern a doctor or something?" so this is again i think related to a non physical thing can we take that up some other time maybe yeah. uh, so my ba- uh, shahu says my baby will turn 2 years how can i improve on self heating eating habit uh, see, these are i'm just going to take up the questions related to uh, this physical session that we had just now ma'am my my remedy for pigeon walk pigeon to walk my girl is 2 years old she keeps her feet inwards Okay, Priyanka Gupta is asking this question. Any remedy for pigeon toe walk? My girl is two years old. She keeps her feet inwards. That I think you got. This is something that you will need to observe over a period of time when the feet are inward, right? So we need to make the corrective measures, and that needs definitely a consultation with a pediatrician. Okay. Okay. so that's uh, my baby weighs my baby weighs more what should i do i think ma'am has talked about uh, this so um quickly in one sentence uh, tejal you want to tell her anything 
Maybe just this last question we'll take because we are we've already overshot the time. Yeah. So my son is just eight months old. What toys should I provide him for physical activity? Toys for physical activity. Ball. Ball is the yeah. best. Yeah. Yeah. So ball, so many balls. Yeah, correct. Everything is possible. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay, Navya is a bit persistent. She just wants to know she is 28 kgs at four, four years. Okay. Mm. So do you Yeah, want to... that's that's a little overweight. Yeah. Yeah. So what, what should I do? So there are a full holistic approach will be required uh, from a diet point of view as well as an activity point of view. Okay. Or from a diet point of view. So mm -hmm. That will require a proper consultation. Okay. Okay, great. So I think I, I would uh, like to share one, uh, you know, Dr. Tejal Kanwar has, uh, she runs uh, this Clinetic program, which I talked about. Um, so she is going to have this, uh, yeah. I would like to share her contact details. If any of you are interested, please feel free to call uh, the number set there. Um, I'm just sharing it just now. Uh, I hope you can see it. You can take a screenshot of it if you like, and uh, it will be useful then for you. And uh, so on that note, um, on that note, I would like to take this uh, opportunity to thank you, um, Tejal. Thank you very much for such an informative uh, session. I think we had a we had a great time and uh, I liked all the to walks that you mentioned. I'm going to try them myself. My daughter is too old for that. She, in fact, just before the session, I asked her, how does one do a duck walk? And I think she told me something, you keep it like this and then do it. Oh God, I couldn't do it myself. So maybe this time all parents no, can very, try it. It's very easy, but it needs a lot of practice. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So thank you very much. Um, Dr. Tejal Kanwar, you've been very, very uh, helpful. Um, I think our parents had a, a good takeaway from this. Uh, do, if you want to consult Dr. Ha, I have just shared her, um, you know, those numbers which I gave you all. Look up Kalinetics. You can even uh, follow her. And um, I think it will be very useful. So thank you very, everybody, for uh, joining us. I hope we have been able to answer all your questions. If not, uh, because of uh, the time constraints, we will look at the questions, the chat later on and answer these questions, send you a little mail if possible. Thank you very much and Thank have you. a great day. Bye-bye.